Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about setting up virtualization station on a QNAP NAS. And I'll put a link in the description of my QNAP playlist. I have a bunch of other videos on this device. And I'll also put a link to the hardware I'm using on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So first I need to install the virtualization software. I'll click on App Center. I'll just click on the magnifying glass and type virtual. And you see virtualization station here. I'll click install on it. And one of the videos I've done in the past was upgrading this to 16 gigabytes of RAM. And you really want to have a lot of RAM if you're running virtualization. If you don't go to 16, at least go to 8. Okay, that has finished installing. I'll click on open. I can close the app center. So it says, welcome to virtualization station. It says system minimum requirements is QTS firmware version 4.3. Point over later, Intel virtualization, at least four gigabytes of memory and virtual switch. So we have the first three checked, the bottom one is not. I'll click finish. It says creating a virtual switch and connecting to the default gateway interface. It says VM marketplace ready to use applications for you. And it says you can visit the VM marketplace. I'll click on that. So it looks like we have a few AWS options here. We have PFSense, I'm not really interested in any of those. I'll click on overview up here. And here we have try a free Windows VM, create a VM, or import a VM. If we click on account management, it has usernames, uh, backup and restore. We have some preferences here and a log. So we'll go back to overview. I'll click create VM and I'm going to be creating an Ubuntu server here. So I'll just type Ubuntu server. The OS type is Linux. The version is 18. 0.04. I'll go with quad core. I'll give it four gigabytes of RAM. And then it says CD image. I'll hit browse. So I've downloaded an image to my NAS. It's Ubuntu 18.04.2 live server. So if you just Google Ubuntu server download and you can find it. So I'll select that. I'll click OK. Hard drive location. It says create image or use existing image. The hard drive storage. It says 250 gigabytes here. I'll just drop that down to 50. It says connect to network virtual switch. For others down here, it says assign to QVM and set VNC password. I'll set a password here. I'll hit OK. Oh, and I still up here under hard drive location, I need to select where I want to store this. So I'll just store it under public. And I'll hit OK. So we have the virtual machine here. I'll click on this. It says virtual machine is powered off. I'll click start. It's asking for my password. And you can see it's booting. You can see down here it has a little keyboard and the person icon. It's asking me to choose my language, so I'll choose English. I'll hit done. I'm going to choose install Ubuntu. It's been assigned an IP address from DHCP. I'll hit done here. It's asking for a proxy. I do have a proxy on my network, so I'm going to use it. I'll hit done. I'll use the default mirror address. I'll hit done here. I'll choose use entire disk. I'll choose the disk and I'll hit done again. And now it's warning me that it'll destroy the information on the disk. I'll hit continue. It's going to ask my name, my server name, my username, and then I'll type a password here. Then I'll choose done. It's asking if I want to install OpenSSH server and I do want to do that. So I'll hit that. I'll go down to done. It's asking what software I want to install and I'm just going to do a blank instance now. And so now it's installing. So it says the install is finished. I'll click reboot now. It says please remove the installation medium. I'll just hit enter. And now it's booting. Okay, so we're at the login, so we can log in with our username and password now. It's still loading a couple of things, it looks like. So I'll look up the IP address, I'll type IP space A, and we have 192.168.7.163. So now I'll open up my terminal. So now I'll open up my terminal on my computer. So from here I can SSH into the virtual machine. 
and here we are, we're logged in. I find it's faster to log in using a native terminal on your computer than to use the virtual console. So I'll go back to our virtual console now and I'll hit exit and then I'll close out this screen. So we can see on virtualization station here, we have the Ubuntu server. It says we're using four cores with nearly 0% CPU utilization. It says we're using 26% of our RAM. It tells where the hard drive image is. It shows the volume capacity and the network. If we go back to our terminal here. I can type cat space forward slash proc forward slash CPU info. And here we'll see the CPU we have. So the server thinks we're using a Intel Core i7. If we type free here, let's see, free dash H. There we go. Um, this will show us how much RAM we have. We have a total of 3.9 gigabytes. We've used 114 meg and there's 3.4 gigabytes free. If we type df space dash h, you can see here we have dev forward slash vda2. It says the size is 49 gigabytes. We've used 5.8 gigabytes. So let's go back to the QNAP. So if we look on the bottom here, we have the power control. We have suspend, console, CD DVD drive, USB connection, snapshot, clone, export, share, delete, settings, backup and restore, and assign to QVM. We'll click on the little gear here. We can see the settings. And these are the settings we set up when we initially set it up. So we have a general, boot options, network, storage, CD, DVD, video, audio, console operation, USB, and others. So on others here, it says auto start none. It has retain previous status or delay. And here it says enable Virtuo Serial. It says this interface is for the communication between the host and virtual machines. Enable Virtuo Serial and install the QNAP guest agent to collect virtual machine IP address and synchronize the time of the virtual machines. It says note the guest tool CD must be inserted into the virtual machine to install the QNAP guest agent. Okay, I'll click back on information here. So if we look over here on the right, it says insert guest tool CD. If we click on the little eye here, it says the guest tools image is for use in Windows. So since we're using Ubuntu, we don't need that. Okay, so that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.